So this monitor is really interesting. It's a beautiful monitor. I love being able to zoom in very quickly to check focus. In fact, as you can see right here, if I go to manual focus on my camera, I can actually sharpen it up a little bit because I zoomed in. And now we're back out again. We are at the setup menus. Of course, this is, it says it's the video assist 4K. You have to set the date and time. And it has the software of four, Video Assist 4K 2.0. And none of the other languages are enabled right now. If you tap on the other buttons, you have your audio controls, your display controls, displays the brightness and contrast and saturation, and then storage cards. Since I have two cards in here, and you say, well, how do you get back to your main screen? For a while, I couldn't figure it out. I would tap on it, nothing happened. But then I, I did a swipe, and that's how you get back to your main screen. You swipe it, and that worked quite well. But those, there's not a lot of settings. I like having the histogram down here. But you lose the histogram when you push that down. You tap on here and it goes back up. We are now recording ProRails LT at 2160 on this card. And I now have audio connectors, mini XLRs plugged into the unit. That's why we're seeing audio down below because they're coming from these mini XLRs. Channel one is my lavalier. Channel two is a shotgun microphone pointed at the fan to give you an idea what the fan sounds like. And you tap here to get your audio. You can adjust your levels. I don't want to go up that high because it distorts. And I can turn off and turn on the fan noise by doing that. You can also adjust your headphone Here's the mini XLRs right here. And if I remove the mini XLR, you're not going to hear me anymore. You really have to push on it. And now we hear the fan motor again. At least we should. And I believe we are hearing the fan motor again. But we lost me. There we No, I'm back. Okay. So here I am. The audio is pretty interesting. Just plug right in. Right now, both of these mics have phantom power going to them as well. If you tap up here, this is your Zebra. There's 40, 50, 60, 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, 100. So you can really fine tune your zebra where you like it. And then let's do this, let's do that. Stop the unit. And if you notice that, that minute 22 with no drop frames in ProRes LT at the highest resolution. Now if you go down here, you can tap on peaking. So here's your peaking, focus peaking. And you can really throw in a lot of peaking or no peaking at all. You have guides. That's a really nice guide for shooting widescreen. And the guides work very nicely. Of course, the popular one will be 185, since that's popular cinema format. That's your guides. 
And last but not least is a grid for lining things up and it just turns the grid on and off. We're going to turn it, turn it off. So you can have guides, grid, focus peaking, and zebra all on at the same time. That's what it looks like. You can tap on the monitor. It's touch sensitive. In fact, there are no buttons on this except the power. That's the only button on this unit. And so far, it's recording OK. But it's certainly not doing the highest quality recordings with my GH4 with the present cards that I own. Let's go to the GH4 and put it at its least quality. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to MP4. And switch to 1080p because I'm at 1080p at 2997. I can also go to 720p. I was able to reformat this raw steel card from Hoodman, which is an HC1 SD card, class 10, but U1, to actually work in here in standard definition. Because we put it in, there it is. The way you format the card is you go to here to the setup menu and hit format card, format to X fat, and then hit format. It has now formatted the card. You hit OK. On this 32 gig card, I get an hour and 18 minutes. It's 720p ProRes proxy, which is the longest record time you have with this unit. So you'll get a little over two hours, about two hours and 30 minutes with a 64 gig card. Okay, let's swipe again. And now it says ready with card one. And right now I'm at 720p at 60 frames a second at ProRes Proxy. Okay, here's another test with uh, the reformatted card. And this is ProRes 720p at 5997 ProRes Proxy. That's right, ProRes Proxy. And it's recording right now at 720p, 29 or 59.94 ProRes Proxy, which is the most compact size file you can create with this unit. And it seems to be recording just fine. It's moving right along. And the It says I have 78 minutes left on this card, and this is a 32 gigabyte card. And it doesn't seem to have any trouble recording this whatsoever, and I wouldn't think it would since this is the lowest quality. Now we'll go to ProRes LT. This is ProRes LT. My camera went out of focus. Let's refocus it. Come on. There you go. And what's interesting is I can actually start recording with my camera as well right now because I'm in 8-bit, not 10-bit. And again, this is the ProRes LT. Let's go standard ProRes. Recording in standard ProRes. And it's doing just fine dandy and all that sort of stuff. 
I do have a camp card down there. Good. And it's recording just fine. But I'm only going to get 24 minutes on a 32 gig card. So, even at 720p. So it uses a lot of space. We'll stop. And just for the fun of it, let's go to ProRes HQ. And this is ProRes HQ 720p. ProRes HQ from my little camera. And it seems to be doing just fine. Not having any trouble, but that's only 15 minutes. 16, 17 minutes, because I've recorded a bit already, on a 32 gig card. Well, let's stop it. So it's a very interesting little device that Blackmagic has created here. As always, tune in to frugalfilmmakers.com for more information on products that are out there for us to use as filmmakers.